Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think that I harassed a lot of you in the hallway to get you to come down here and join us. So thank you so much. Um, so everyone's least favorite question. Do we have any volunteers to share their answers with us while we're doing trivia today? A few volunteers. We have four spots. Yes, come on up. Come on up. Come on up, ma'am in the yellow. Yes, wonderful. We need one more. One more volunteer. Oh, someone's being voluntold. I'm not going to make you do it, ma'am. One more volunteer. No? You'll do it? Come on down. Fabulous. Wonderful. Yay. All right. Fantastic. Come on up. So the game we have today is Are You Smarter Than the Library? I sure hope so. Okay. <laughs> All right, folks. So we're going to do... I believe about 15 questions about the Library of Congress. So my wonderful, beautiful contestants up here, all I need you to do is just write down whichever letter you think the answer is. Um, I will, I did promise my boss I would not sing the Jeopardy theme while I was up here, but no promises. All right, folks, so are we ready to get started? Are we excited? Are we excited to be at the National Book Festival? Yeah. Woo! Ooh, I know I am. All right, let's get started. All right, our first question. Which was the first separate library of, or first separate building, a Library of Congress building? Was it A, the Thomas Jefferson building, B, the John Adams building, or C, the James Madison building? All right, what do we think? We have our answers. We have A, A, B, and A. What do we think, ladies and gentlemen? A, that is exactly right, the Thomas Jefferson Building. So the Thomas Jefferson Building opened to the public in 1897. The first Library of Congress in the original Capitol Building burned during the War of 1812, August 24th, 1814. I'm also a tour guide at the uh, Capitol, if you can't tell. <laughs> and the Library of Congress actually burned down again, Christmas Eve, 1851. So now we have the Jefferson Building, which is <clears throat> mostly fireproof. All right, next question. Are we ready, my lovely contestants? Yes. Okay, fantastic. All right, and there's the answer. Wonderful. Which first lady did Librarian of Congress James Billington work with to create the first National Book Festival? Was it A, Nancy Reagan, B, Laura Bush, C, Michelle Obama, or D, Mary Todd Lincoln? One of those I put in there for fun. Okay, we have B, B, B and A. What do we think, wonderful uh, participating audience? B. B, let's find out. Yes, it was B. Excellent. I think you are smarter than the library. Luckily, these get harder as we go on. So yes, Laura Bush in 2001 with um, Librarian of Congress, James Billington started the first National Book Festival. And Laura Bush actually started the um, Texas Book Festival in 1995. All right, next question, number three. The library's Gershwin Prize for popular songs is named after these brothers. Their contributions to music include I Got Rhythm and Rhapsody in Blue. Is it A, George and Ira, B, James and George, C, Henry and William, or D, William and Ira? All right, we have A, A, D, and A. What do we think, ladies and gentlemen? A, that is correct, George and Ira. And the Library of Congress has a Gershwin music exhibit on the ground floor, so come and see us. Oh, some of the objects in there include uh, the, the brother's piano, a couple of oil paintings of the brothers, and their congressional gold medals. So come and see that. Okay, question number four. Which holiday does the American Folklife Center have a collection devoted to? Is it A, Easter, B, St. Patrick's Day, C, Halloween, or D, Christmas? All right, we have C, 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 and B. What do we think, ladies and gentlemen? A, I heard C and A. The answer is C, Halloween, my favorite holiday. So resources for Halloween, the collection includes folk customs, fine art, pop culture, literature um, about Halloween and Dia de Mortes or Dia de les Mortes. Uh, we have some film from clips from Frankenstein and we have even some um, written information about seances with Harry Houdini. Oh. 
All right, question number five. Thomas Edison's film, Blank, is said to have launched a thousand film careers, all of which are represented in the library's National Audiovisual and Conservation Center. Is it A, the burp, B, the sneeze, or C, the cough? Some of which are more embarrassing than others. All right, we have B, B, C, and A. Oh, we have a couple of each. What do we think, ladies and gentlemen, A, B, or C? I heard, I've heard all, everything. <laughs> the answer is B, the sneeze. So imagine your slow motion sneeze is in the Library of Congress collection. All right, next question. We're doing great here. How are we feeling, lovely contestants? Feeling good? How are we feeling, lovely audience? Fantastic. All right, number six. Since its founding, the library has acquired numerous novelty items. Which of these items are not part of the library's collection? Is it A, the first Ken and Barbie dolls? B, okay. <laughs> B, Paganini's handwritten recipe for ravioli? Or C, Dorothy's ruby slippers? Hmm. C's across the board. Lovely audience? All right. Yes, Dorothy's ruby slipper is worn by Judy Garland in the 1939 film Wizard of Oz. Those are actually at the Smithsonian National Museum of American History. Something tells me we have a lot of local DC folks that already knew that. All right, we'll be taking that off next National Book Festival. <laughs> All right, question number seven. In 1869, the Tungzhou Emperor of which Asian country gifted the library with 933 volumes? This donation led to the establishment of the Asian Reading Room. Is the answer A, Japan, B, China, C, Thailand, or D, Indonesia? Okay, we have B, A, C, and B. What do we think, lovely audience? C, B, A, all right, the answer is B, China. And this collection, now we have 1.2 million volumes in the Asian division of the Library of Congress, which is the largest collection of outside mainland China and Taiwan. And you can visit the uh, Asian Reading Room at the Jefferson Building of the Library of Congress. Get your reader's cards. All right, number eight, at its peak, Peanuts was in how many newspapers worldwide, most of which can be found in the library's newspaper and current periodical reading room? A, 1,300, B, 2,600, or C, 5,200? My lovely contestants say B across the board. What do we think, lovely audience? I got a lot of C, I got an A, let's find out. 2,600. Fun trivia fact, it's always the middle number. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number nine. What is the oldest comic book currently in the library's collection? Is it A, Action Comics number one from 1938, B, Archie Comics from 1941, or C, Famous Funnies from 1933? What do we think? A, 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 and A. A is across the board. What do we think, ladies and gentlemen? C, A. All right, let's find out. It is C. Ha, ha. <laughs> Finally, I got one right. <laughs> I'm very bummed that it's not B, though. All right, number 10. Located in the Children's Literature Center, Old King Cole set the Guinness Book of World Records for world's smallest children's book. So how small is that? Is it from zero to nine to 1.25 millimeters? Is it 0.5 to 1.5 millimeters? Or is it 1.0 to 0.8 millimeters square? What do we think, which size? I really wish I knew how big millimeters were. Uh, a, B, A, and B. What do we think, lovely audience? A, B, nobody thinks it's C, let's find out. It is A, congratulations. And we have an image on the screen of old King Cole next to a penny. Isn't that fabulous, wonderful. All right, all right, question number 11. According to the library's collection, which was the first amusement park? Is it A, Coney Island? Our lovely contestants are so far ahead of me. 
<laughs> B, is it Hershey Park or C, is it Walt Disney World? A, 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 and A. All right, we're gonna have to take this one out too. It is Coney Island, fantastic, yes. So Coney Island was founded in 1895. Hershey Park was founded in 1906, and Disneyland was founded in 1955 in Anaheim, California. All right, on to question number 12. How are we feeling, lovely contestants? Feeling good? Audience? I'm feeling pretty okay. <laughs> All right, according to the Copyright Office, upon, oops, sorry. According to the Copyright Office, upon release in 1969, George Romero's Night of the Living Dead went straight into the public domain. Is that true or is it false? B, A, B, and B. What do we think, ladies and gentlemen? Did Night of the Living Dead go straight into public domain? Mm, okay, I've got 50-50 here. Let's find out. That is true, and that happened because the Walter Reed organization, which was the original distributor of the film, failed to place a copyright indication on the prints when the name of the film was changed. So because of an error in the paperwork, Night of the Living Dead is in the public domain. You can share and distribute copies if you'd like. So always remember to do your paperwork. And visit our copyright office in the Madison building across the street. Oh, okay, I'll stop. <clears throat> All right, number 13, while the Library of Congress has many catalog entries for Happy Birthday to You, there's only one audio recording of it in the collection. It is located in A, Performing Arts, B, National Audiovisual Conservation Center, C, American Folk Life Center, or D, the Music Division. What do we think, lovely contestants? C, B, C, and B. All right, audience, what do we think? Okay, the answer is C. The American Folk Life Center is two for O right now, which is also in the Thomas Jefferson Building. All right, question number 14. Who was the first U.S. Poet Laureate? Was it A, Joseph Oslander, B, Robert Penn Warren, C, Robert Frost, or D, Elizabeth Bishop? I'm hearing C, 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 and B. What do we think, lovely audience? B, A, C, a little bit of everything. No D, though, all right. The answer is A, Joseph Oslander, who is most known for his work, The Unconquerables, from 1943. All right, question number 15, our last question. I know, I'm sad, too. All right. <clears throat> Even the Muppets have appeared before Congress. The Prints and Photographs Division has a series of photographs with Elmo appearing before a House of Appropriations subcommittee. True or false? A, 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 B. What do we think, lovely audience? True or false? True, true, true. Let's find out. True, and this is one of those photographs there. So Elmo was testifying in front of Congress uh, for $2 million in funding for music education programs. And that is it. Thank you so much for playing my beautiful contestants. Let's give them a round of applause. And thank you to my lovely audience, wonderful. And thank you to me for all my great jokes. So my love. My lovely contestants here are going to take home a wonderful swag bag, and my lovely audience, you can take the lanyards that are on the chair. They match our wonderful volunteer shirts. And thank you again. I hope you enjoy the festival, and we have plenty of volunteers in the room if you have any questions about anything, wayfinding, et cetera, or if you just want to give me compliments, okay? All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a good day. Thank you.